how did we go from these old wheezing diesels to today's highway monsters? And more importantly, is there such a thing as too much power? Let's travel back to the 1940s, when trucking was a whole different world. One where drivers were more like mechanics, weightlifters and survivalists all rolled into one. Back then, if you were a trucker, your engine options were, let's just say, not great. To put things in perspective, today's long haul trucks easily push 500 to 600 horsepower. Some even go beyond 750 horsepower. But in the 1940s, you were lucky if you had 150 to 200 horsepower total. That's about the same as a modern day Toyota Camry. But instead of moving a 3,500 pound car, it was hauling a 20,000 pound empty truck before you even loaded a single crate onto the trailer. So yeah, speed wasn't exactly their strong suit. Now let's talk about what driving one of these trucks was actually like because it wasn't just slow, it was painful. First off, hills were your worst nightmare. If you hit a steep grade, you could expect your truck to drop to single digit speeds, sometimes as low as five miles per hour. And that's if you didn't completely stall out. There are stories of truckers carrying bricks, wooden blocks, or even big rocks in the cab, because when the truck lost steam on an uphill climb, they had to, one, jump out of the truck, while it was rolling backward, shove a block under the wheel to stop it from sliding into traffic, three, climb back in, restart the truck, and try again. Talk about a full body workout, and don't even get me started on braking. And yet, despite all this, trucking kept growing. Because no matter how slow, dangerous, or exhausting it was, people needed goods delivered, and truckers got the job done. But the industry had a serious problem. The trucks just weren't powerful enough. And that's when the quest for more horsepower began. By the 1950s, trucking was booming. America was expanding fast, interstates were being built, suburbs were growing, and freight demand was skyrocketing. But there was one big problem. Trucks were still painfully underpowered. Yes, engines had gotten slightly better than the 1940s, but hauling heavy freight up a hill still felt like dragging a piano through a swamp. Truckers needed more power, more torque, and more reliability. Highway speeds were increasing, but trucks were still struggling to keep up. Loads were getting heavier, meaning engines had to work even harder. Competition with railroads was fierce. If trucking was going to be the future of freight, it needed stronger engines. And then came turbochargers. Sweet, sweet turbochargers. In the late 1950s, turbochargers began appearing on heavy-duty truck engines. And suddenly, trucks could climb hills without drivers needing to say a quick prayer first. Engines became more fuel efficient and powerful at the same time. Trucking was forever changed. Popular trucks of the time were Kenworth 500 series, Peterbilt 281-35, Mac B model, and others. The 1950s marked the beginning of the horsepower arms race. Truck manufacturers saw the potential of more power, better efficiency, and new technology like turbochargers. But the real explosion in engine power? That was just getting started. By the 1970s, the trucking industry was going full throttle, literally. Freight demand was at an all-time high. The American economy was booming, and truckers were putting in long hours behind the wheel to keep the country moving. But there was one thing every trucker wanted. More power. At this point, companies like Cummins, Caterpillar, and Detroit Diesel were in an all-out horsepower war. Nobody wanted to be that guy stuck crawling up a mountain at 15 miles per hour, downshifting through every gear while his buddy in a more powerful truck blasted past with a smug grin. Truck stops were filled with stories of guys who could crest a hill without ever touching third gear, and those stories were half bragging rights, half motivation. More power meant less time on the road, faster deliveries, and most importantly, more money and truck manufacturers knew it. Engines like the Cummins NTC350 were pushing 350 horsepower, 
which at the time was considered monstrous. But that was just the beginning. Remember how turbochargers started appearing in the late 1950s? By the 1970s, they were everywhere. Turbocharging became a standard feature in heavy-duty diesel engines, boosting power and efficiency at the same time. Now, trucks could climb hills without losing speed, maintain higher average speeds on long hauls, haul heavier loads without wrecking their fuel economy. More power didn't just change how trucks performed, it changed how truckers thought about their rigs. Just as horsepower was skyrocketing, so were fuel prices. The 1973 oil crisis hit, and suddenly fuel was more expensive than ever. Trucking companies and independent owner-operators started feeling the squeeze. Some states imposed fuel rationing, forcing truckers to limit their miles. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of killing the horsepower wars, the crisis actually made engines better. Why? Because manufacturers now had to make powerful engines that were also fuel efficient. Engine makers refined turbocharging to extract more power with less fuel. Aerodynamics became a factor. Trucks started getting more streamlined to reduce drag. Torque numbers climbed, meaning trucks could haul heavier loads without needing excessive horsepower. By the late 1970s, 400 plus horsepower was becoming the new normal. By the end of the decade, truck engines were regularly pushing 400 plus horsepower, a far cry from the 200 horsepower workhorses of the 1940s. However, the horsepower wars were far from over. In fact, they were about to get even crazier in the 1980s and 1990s. Fast forward to the 1990s and something incredible had happened. Truck engines were hitting the 500 plus horsepower mark. This wasn't just a lucky accident. By this point, the trucking industry demanded bigger, better, and more powerful engines. The 90s were a decade of expansion, high freight demand, and long haul dominance. And to keep up, trucks had to be stronger, faster, and more durable than ever before. Unlike the early decades when trucks struggled to haul heavy loads, by the 90s, big power was expected, and manufacturers delivered. This was the era of legendary truck engines. The 90s saw the birth of some of the most reliable and powerful diesel engines ever built. These weren't just workhorses, they were icons of trucking culture. Detroit Diesel Series 60, one of the first fully electronically controlled heavy-duty truck engines. This inline six pushed over 500 horsepower and 1,850 pound-feet of torque in its most powerful versions. It quickly became a favorite for fleets and owner-operators alike. Also, the Caterpillar 3406E, a beast of an engine loved by truckers for its insane durability and mountain climbing torque, this thing could run for over a million miles if properly maintained. It had legendary pulling power, making it perfect for heavy haulers. These engines weren't just powerful, they were reliable. This was the decade when truckers stopped worrying about breakdowns every 200,000 miles and started expecting their engines to last over a million. One of the biggest game changers of the 90s, electronics. Before this, diesel engines were mostly mechanical, meaning power and fuel efficiency were limited by old school tuning. But in the 90s, manufacturers introduced electronic fuel injection and engine control units, ECUs. This changed everything. Suddenly, a 500 plus horsepower truck wasn't a rare beast. It was becoming the new standard. And at this point, there was no going back. With 500 plus horsepower now the norm, it was clear, this was only the beginning. Because the 2000s, well, they were about to push things to an entirely new level. Today, we're living in the golden age of truck engines. We've come a long way from the underpowered rigs of the 1940s that crawled up hills like exhausted snails. Modern semi-trucks are absolute monsters. We're talking about engines that make 600 plus horsepower, more than a lot of supercars, 2,050 plus pound-feet of torque, more pulling power than a freaking Formula One car, a million-mile lifespan, because no trucker wants to swap engines every 200,000 miles. 
And the best part? This isn't even the peak yet. Just take a look at some of today's heavy hitters. Kenworth W990 with a Cummins X15 up to 605 horsepower and 2,050 pound-feet of torque. This thing can pull just about anything without breaking a sweat. Peterbilt 389 with a Packard MX-13, a high-tech fuel-efficient powerhouse with up to 565 horsepower and 1,850 pound-feet of torque. Freightliner Cascadia with a Detroit DD-16, built for serious long-haul jobs, cranking out 600 horsepower and 2,050 pound-feet of torque. These engines aren't just bigger and badder, they're smarter. From struggling up hills to effortless hauling, let's put this in perspective. Back in the 1940s, truckers were lucky if they had 150 horsepower, and they had to pray to the trucking gods before attempting a hill. By the 1970s, 350 horsepower was considered a powerhouse. In the 1990s, 500 horsepower was the gold standard for long-haul rigs. And now, 600-plus horsepower is just another Tuesday. Truckers today don't just drive, they command rolling fortresses of power. Modern rigs don't struggle up steep grades, they conquer them effortlessly. They don't chug fuel like a steam locomotive, they use precision-tuned fuel injection and turbocharging to balance power and efficiency. And the best part? This horsepower race isn't over yet, because now there's a new player in the game, electric and hybrid trucks. And if you think diesel engines are strong, just wait until we start talking about a thousand plus horsepower electric motors. So how much power is too much? We've already hit 600 plus horsepower with diesel engines, but now there's a new challenger in town, electric trucks, and they're flipping the horsepower game upside down. Just look at the Tesla Semi. It claims a thousand horsepower and instant torque. No gears, no lag, just pure acceleration. Imagine a fully loaded truck hitting 60 miles per hour faster than a muscle car. That's the kind of world we're heading toward. Unlimited power, zero emissions. With electric motors, we're no longer limited by turbochargers and fuel injection. These trucks can have as much power as the batteries can handle. But here's the big question. Will truckers embrace silent, instant power? Or will they still crave the deep rumble of a diesel engine? For now, diesel still dominates the highways, but in the future, who knows? Maybe we'll see 2,000 horsepower electric rigs pulling freight in total silence. One thing's for sure, the horsepower war isn't over yet. So why do truck engines keep getting more powerful? Because every generation of truckers demands more. More speed, more hauling power, more efficiency. And as long as there are hills to climb and freight to haul, truck engines will keep evolving. But what do you think? Do you prefer the raw power of a diesel V8? Or are you excited for the electric torque revolution? Let us know in the comments. And if you love diving into trucking history, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss our next deep dive. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next haul.